welcome to Vilnius, where the trolley bus became an icon of the city. A system installed in times when Lithuania was not a free country. But nowadays, it is still a viable mode of transport. And it seems that it still has quite a future ahead of it. This is the Vilnius trolley bus. The first trolley buses started driving around Vilnius in 1956, on the section Antakonis Stotis. The network, just like the city, rapidly expanded from 7.8 to 217 km within the first 10 years. The first trolley bus depot in Antakonis quickly had to be expanded, to be able to accommodate the expanding fleet. In 1985, a second depot was opened. Located on the western side of the city, in the micro-district Virchulischkis. Over the course of the network's existence, many types of trolley buses have operated in the city, starting with the Russian-built MTB-82D. Once the network expanded, the most common type became the 9TR from the famous Czechoslovak manufacturer Škoda. Škoda remained the main provider of trolley buses to Vilnius for a while, with the 14TR arriving throughout the 80s and 90s. 14 TRM in the late 90s and the stretch version of the 14 TR, the 15 TR, in 1991. Later on, the Polish company Solaris became the main provider, although the latest model, the Trolino 412 AC, is built in cooperation with Skoda. And with that said, let's take a look at the network. The current network consists of 18 lines, of which 17 are active at the time of publication. Two of the 18 lines only operate in peak hours on corridors with less consistent amount of passengers. The network uses 600 volt AC overhead power lines. But where do these lines bring you? And keep in mind here that the origin and destination of the routes are often named after the district they go to rather than the exact bus stop. On the map I mention the exact bus stop. We start off with line 1 from Stortis to Karolinischkis via Jurinas. Followed by line 2 from Stortis to Soletikis via the district of Vandakonis. And line 3 from Shoris Mistalis to Karolinischkis via the city center. And line 4 from Antakonis to Jumeje Panerei, but in the weekends only to Gerosiusfield Jestotale. Line 6 from Germune to Jumeje Panerei via Calvario Gatwe and the center. But wait, where is line 5? Well, line 5, 8 and 11 are not existing anymore, but in the past they used to. Line 5 for example went from Jamune to Stotis via Calvario Gatve. Nowadays it is not there anymore. Moving on, we have line 7 from Stotis to Pasilaice via Jurinas. Line 9, Jamune Karolinischkis via Constitutius Prospectus. Line 10, Soletikis Nojininke via Calvario Gatve. Line 12, Jemune Jemei Panere via Jalesis Tiltas. Line 13, Pasilaice Jemei Panere. Line 14, Karolinischkis Soletikis via Nojamistis and Jalesis Tiltas. Line 15, Stortis Tetnago Gatve. Line 16, Stortis Pasilaice via Las Dine. Line 17, Germune Nojininke. Line 18, Pasilaice Tetnago Gatve. Line 19, Soleticus Pasilaice via Constitutius Prospectus. Line 20, Stotis Schirmune. And finally, line 21, Sodeticus Schirmune. And additionally, there is the first depot in Antakonis and the second one in Versulischkis. Line 14 is currently not operating, but hopefully it will be back by autumn. And that rounds up the heavily interlined trolleybus network of Vilnius.
But then the next question arises. How well is the network actually used? Well, here for IDUG and last year's statistics. But keep in mind that 2021 saw less ridership than normal. This was of course due to the pandemic. The top three lines in terms of ridership were Line 6 with on working days over 12,000 passengers. Line 2 with on working days almost 19,000 passengers. And the busiest line of 2021 was Line 7, with on working days over 19,000 passengers. In terms of overall daily ridership in 2021, on working days it almost reached 120,000, and in the weekend this was around 50,000. However, this was of course not a normal year. In 2022 it is expected to be increase again. Alright then, let's now get into the types of trolley buses used to transport all these aforementioned people. According to the last data I could find, there are 279 trolleybuses of 6 types operating in Vilnius. First of all, and also still the most common one, is the 14TR, the most iconic one of the fleet. During the 90s, Skoda gave it a refreshed version, the Skoda 14TRM. This one is also happily operating on the streets of Vilnius. For high demand routes, there is also the Skoda 15TR. In Vilnius, this one operates mostly during peak hours on Line 7. This is the 18 meter version of the Skoda 40 TR. And with the change of the millennium, Vilnius chose also a new provider of trolley buses. This time it was the Polish manufacturer Solaris, who brought the Trollino 15 AC to Vilnius. A couple of years later saw also the choice for some locally produced buses, with the help of the Belarusian manufacturer MAZ. This resulted in the creation of the Amber Vilnius 12AC. But this was not very successful, as only two trolley buses were produced. Hence, a couple of years later, the choice was made again for Solaris, who came up with the Trollino 4 12AC. And this is the most modern type in the current fleet. But what will the future bring for this network? Often the trolleybus infrastructure has been described as scrap metal, or outdated. There were times when the municipality considered removing sections of the trolleybus network. But instead of removal, the municipality seems to have figured out that they could use the network more effectively, by the means of off-fire capability of newer trolleybuses, combined with en route charging of the battery. This potentially could extend the network, without the need for additional infrastructure. This has the potential to expand the network towards the district of Pilaita, the airport, etc. What the exact plans will be remains to be seen, as the tender for 159 new trolleybuses is still running as of the time of publication of this video. Also, the wire network gets a welcome refresh and sees the first changes in the infrastructure since 2000. 80 of the existing switches are being replaced by modern radio controlled fast switches which aim to reduce the off-wire incidents. It also removes the need for slowing down to maneuver through the switches. This will improve the driving time and traffic conditions. Additionally, the poles are getting a fresh layer of paint. And on that note, I would like to close off this video. Hopefully I gave you a nice overview over the network, where it started and where it may go. Let's hope the system keeps getting its deserved and needed investment and improvement. And I wish they keep some active 14TRs around. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully see you soon.